Thank you very much. Um, you were welcome to have embellished anything. It would have been fine by me. <laughs> um, this is very, very exciting to see everyone here, such a big group, um, and having two symposiums in one year in one state is just, uh, it blows my mind. I think it's just wonderful. So this is a really exciting time, and I hope you all get what you'd like out of these symposi symposiums. Thanks. Um, so I was asked to talk about Parkinson's disease and Parkinsonism, um, but because the physician before me already gave you a little bit about Parkinson's disease, I'm not going to touch too much on that. And I'm just going to talk about Parkinsonisms, or atypical Parkinson's. Or sometimes your doctor looks at you and says, I don't know what you have. So that's this basket, okay? Basically, Parkinsonism means it looks like Parkinson's disease. Maybe there's a tremor, maybe there's a shuffling gait or a shuffling to the walk. Maybe there's stiffness or rigidity, falls or imbalance. Maybe there's only one of these, maybe there's a couple of these but it looks like Parkinson's disease. How is a movement disorder like a bird watcher? Well, if you're like me and don't know anything about birds, all five of these birds are just bluebirds, okay? They're all blue, they're all little, they're birds. But there's several people out there, I'm sure, who'll recognize that, no, there's only one bluebird in that picture. Then there's a blue jay, and there's a parrot, and there's a who knows what, right? So the purpose of that slide is to ask you to please don't self-diagnose yourself. You will have many things in common with what I talk about next, the other Parkinson syndromes. Identifying and diagnosing those different Parkinsonisms takes an expert and actually years of following the patient, not just a checklist. Just because you're blue doesn't make you a blue jay, okay? And again, let me emphasize what I'll say, you'll nod your head, you'll go, that's me, that's me, that's me. Be real careful because unless a doctor diagnosed you with one of these things, it may not be you, okay? So what can look like Parkinson's disease? On the left there is obviously Parkinson's disease. Imagine that. And then there's atypical Parkinson's disease. On the right are lots of other things. Strokes, head injuries, normal pressure, hydrocephalus, and the list goes on and on of other things that can look Parkinsonian. I'm not going to go on that because that would take about three days to go through, but we're just going to go over the atypical Parkinson's diseases. What difference does it make? If it's blue, who cares if it's a parrot versus a blue jay? It's just a bluebird, right? It actually makes a lot of difference. Um, prognosis might be quite different. What you'll be dealing with over the next few years may be very different from someone else who's dealing with a different disease. And the treatment might be very different. So it is important to understand or to be diagnosed appropriately uh, when that diagnosis becomes clear. <coughs> this is actually a much more complicated um, situation or a group of disorders than this slide will pretend to be. But to make things as simple as possible, I group these into four uh, symptom onsets. So if your earliest symptom was memory loss, you might be diagnosed later with Lewy body dementia. If your earliest symptom before anything else showed up was falling, you might later be diagnosed as PSP or CBD. If your earliest symptom was maybe a behavioral change, you might be diagnosed with FTD or frontotemporal dementia. And if the earliest thing was fainting, maybe it's something else called multiple system atrophy. 
I'm going to talk about each one of these. And because these words are huge and hard to keep saying, especially when you're nervous and standing in front of 300 people, I'm just going to use the acronyms there. So Lewy body dementia is LBD. Progressive supranuclear palsy and corticobasilar de degeneration are PSP and CBD. Frontotemporal dementia is FTD. And multiple system atrophy is MSA. The other thing I'm going to use as we go forward are car cartoon characters to try and give you kind of an image and so I can put a story with it. I don't mean to use cartoon characters as mocking anything or make light of it um, because they're all very serious diseases. But we're going to start first with Lombardo, who is an opera singer. And 10 years ago, he had to retire earlier than he had really hoped to. He retired at uh, 65 because he could no longer manage his own um, uh, meetings and, and attending places. He couldn't multitask, in other words. Five years ago, he was diagnosed with early dementia. Three years ago, he was diagnosed with quote-unquote Parkinson's disease because of some stiffness in his limbs and slowness, but he didn't really respond very strongly to the medications. And now, currently, he's having hallucinations and delusions about 40 people live in his house and none of them have legs. So, what does he look like? Physically, he looks like he has really mild Parkinson's syndrome or Parkinson's disease. He walks, he talks, he's very functional, physically functional. He can even hold a conversation with you and if you didn't know him, you wouldn't think anything was wrong. Um, he can feed and clothe himself, do most of those activities, but he needs some supervision because of those hallucinations, delusions, and occasional forgetfulness. What does his wife look like? <laughs> this one is supposed to be funny. <clears throat> but this is what she looks like. She's haggard and burnt out. Um, Medicines don't seem to help him. Um, they, they can be used a little bit, um, but they're not as strong as, say, in a garden variety Parkinson's disease patient. Memory medicines can help a little bit. And then antipsychotic medicines, medicines to treat the hallucinations and delusions. And um, I just want to make a little side note that there's only two antipsychotic medicines that are, and I put the word safe in quotes, but safe um, in any kind of Parkinsonian syndromes. All the rest will make their Parkinsonism, their physical symptoms, much, much worse. So um, this became, becomes a very tricky situation when you're trying to treat the mental without affecting the physical. So the two antipsychotic medications for anyone with Parkinson's, Parkinsonism, or anything that looks like Parkinson's is uh, quetiapine and clozapine. I put two big no-nos on the right in red. I don't know if they came out very clear, but there's Zyprexa and Risperdal are the brand names. Okay, so moving on. If the earliest symptom is falling, then we're going to be talking about progressive supranuclear palsy and or corticobasal degeneration. So we've got Peppermint Patty and Charlie Brown here to show you what these two look like. Peppermint Patty, about four years ago at the age of 60, started falling backwards. <coughs> a year ago, started having a little double vision. Six months ago, diagnosed with quote-unquote <coughs> Parkinson's disease, but she doesn't respond at all to levodopa or the Parkinson medications. And now, today, she can't stand up without falling. Charlie Brown has something very similar, and sometimes there's a lot of overlap between these two. 
But about four years ago, at age 60, he noticed some poor dexterity in his left hand. So like when typing letters, his left hand wouldn't always behave like it was supposed to. Three years ago, he was told he had a stroke because the left hand just wasn't working well at all. Two years ago, he started falling. Six months ago, diagnosed with quote unquote Parkinson's disease, but again, he didn't respond to medications either. And now currently, he can't really use his left arm or leg to any real purposeful uh, function. Both of these people could have been diagnosed by movement disorder specialists as Parkinson's disease. And there's two big reasons for that. Number one is these are bad, and we'd much prefer that the person have idiopathic garden variety Parkinson's disease. So when we meet a peppermint patty for the first time, I think everyone would agree, we try everything to think that it's Parkinson's disease, try the medicines, and hope to gosh we're wrong about our gut feeling. The other reason is they might not look at all like peppermint patty in the beginning. They might look all the world like garden variety Parkinson's disease. And it's only a year or two years or three years later when we have an aha moment and say, oh shoot, this isn't garden variety Parkinson's disease. So the treatment of these two, um, the carbidopa, levodopa can help some people and to make it very confusing, they can help a lot in the beginning and then not have an effect later. Um, physical, occupational, and speech therapies are really the mainstay of trying to help these people. Um, weighted walkers, feeding tubes, and special eyeglasses, basi basically all the equipment to help somebody with uh, disabilities uh, are what is the mainstay for helping. Prognosis, PSP has about six to eight years of longevity from the time of symptom onset. CBD has 10 years and up from, from symptom on, onset. And I've seen up to 20 years. I don't know if any farther out. Okay, so number three on our list is the behavioral change, or frontotemporal dementia, FTD. And FTD gives me a nice little gimmick there. <laughs> Hopefully y'all don't confuse the company with uh, the Pennington Research Center. <laughs> um, so this uh, originally was known as um, Pick's disease, but I'm gonna call this little flying guy Fred. He's gold and he's very extravagant. So a year ago, at about 56, he started embarrassing his wife at parties, just saying inappropriate things, embarrassing her, saying um, not, he didn't seem to have any control over what he said. Eight months ago, when his brother died suddenly, he didn't seem to care, which is really disturbing to the family. And about six months ago, he noticed a tremor in his right hand, and so was diagnosed as Parkinson's disease, but again, didn't respond too well to the medications. Four months ago was the last time his best friend ever talked to him because his best friend found him completely inappropriate and not uh, friendly. And currently his wife must tell him when to bathe, when to eat, all the while putting up with his completely inappropriate behavior. So she would be another picture of a frazzled <laughs> wife now, Fred has a twin sister named Freda, and she's almost the complete opposite. She also has FTD, but a year ago, she stopped going to social events. But she didn't say she was sad, she's not <coughs> depressed. Eight months ago, when Fred and her brother died, she didn't, have, didn't seem to care. Six months ago, she also noticed a tremor in her right hand diagnosed with Parkinson's and didn't respond to medications. Four months ago was the last time her best friend spoke to her, but this was because her best friend just never got anything out of her. They didn't have conversations. She just kind of sat there. And currently, Freda's husband must tell her when to bathe, when to eat, 
all the while putting up with her lack of motivation and appreciation. So there are two, just to be very generic, two types of FTD. Um, one is where the behavior gets very extravagant and uh, impulsive, and the other where it almost goes away, like apathy. They don't have any motivation to do uh, just about anything. You can still hold a conversation with them, but um, Fred will be talking about your pants and all sorts of other weird things, and Freda will only answer questions. She won't start any conversations. The levodopa um, treated, used to treat Parkinson's disease can help uh, Fred and Freda with their physical symptoms, um, but their physical symptoms are typically fairly mild. Memory medicines can help a little bit, but sometimes they make the Freds out there worse. And behavior medications have limited effect, especially on the apathy. So the Fredas are actually um, pretty uh, discouraging to treat because they don't have depression. Antidepressants don't seem to motivate them or do anything. And finally, we're up to the fourth one. If you're first symptom was fainting or lightheadedness. We might be talking about multiple system atrophy. So I don't have a nice picture for this one, but three years ago at age 52, let's call her Miss Alice, started having dizziness. Two years ago, she had to see a urologist for bladder problems. And a year ago, she actually started fainting and diagnosed with Parkinson's disease because of some rigidity or stiffness. Um, <clears throat> Miss Alice goes on to live about six to eight years, um, but she can't sit up. She has to be in a wheelchair that's reclined because of the extremely low blood pressure going to her head. She has all of her intellect, and in fact, I just had a patient recently who was working all the way up until the very minute he died um, as a consultant, so um, just laying down on his computer. So they, the intellect stays. Um, treatment for them is supportive only. Levodopa really doesn't help. Um, the main thing that we're trying to do is keep the blood pressure up, Prognosis is poor, average of six years after the diagnosis, and most, like I said, are either in a wheelchair or in a recliner or bed um, because of those severe drops in blood pressure. So here's a handful of famous faces that may have gone through some of this. On the far left is Johnny Cash, who I've heard had multiple system atrophy. On the bottom right is Dudley Moore, who is well known to have progressive supranuclear palsy, although he doesn't look much like Peppermint Patty. And on the top right is Nietzsche, a German philosopher who we think maybe could have had frontotemporal dementia. So after that somewhat uh, sad talk, I hope nobody fits any of those. But again, um, please don't label yourself as a bluebird until somebody has actually uh, identified you. And for those of my patients sitting in the room, I know you want an update. <laughs> uh, this was two days ago when our street flooded and this is my 20 month old sitting in a nice puddle. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>